Hello, this is Michael Hexter, and welcome to Politics 2100 here on YouTube. So this episode I'm calling Libertarians Expose Blatant Racism and Their Fantasy Economics versus Progressive Nina Turner. So this is a commentary on a Twitter exchange between the Libertarian Party of uh, New Hampshire or some representative of that party that is tweeting using that name uh, versus the progressive uh, former state senator from Ohio and uh, commentator um, Nina Turner, uh, who ran for Congress and was defeated uh, in Cleveland, in the Cleveland uh, uh, congressional district. Um, and, uh, you know, has since then been a commentator mostly for, uh, TYT, the Young Turks Network, um, and is a, as was also associated with the Bernie Sanders campaign uh, in 2016. Um, so uh, Nina Turner is, you know, very strong, progressive, and um, uh, states her positions boldly and clearly, among other things, on Twitter. But in any case, there was an interaction uh, that has gotten lots of commentary and play uh, from, I think it's uh, July the 19th, um, uh, where uh, Nina Turner said, uh, insulin should be free in a tweet, medicine should be free, and then um, uh, the Libertarian Party quoted her tweet and said, Nina Turner picking crops should be free. Um, and then Nina responded, this is racist and anti-black, period. In no way is advocating for free insulin comparable to chattel sa slavery. Shameful and, un and un uneducated. And then there's a young man, there's other people who many libertarians have sort of pounced on this as an example of how they can raise their profile and uh, um, explain to the world their ideas and also to, to uh, lambast uh, progressives uh, or progressive ideas, for instance, about uh, you know, free health care for people, or in other words, uh, a state-funded health care or government-funded health care versus our current system. And, um, uh, and so this is, uh, and, and there have been, other interactions so the libertarian party thinks it's sort of ha of new hampshire and then other libertarians think they've sort of got nina turner by uh saying well would you you know uh cotton picking cotton for free or having free cotton for everybody is the equivalent of uh, uh demanding that we have state-funded um uh, health care and also at the point of consumption of that health care or medicine, uh, no one is, uh, the, the patient is not paying money for that. And so, uh, and, and there, I'll put links to other um, outrageous uh, uh, um, tweets by this Libertarian Party of New Hampshire, and uh, maybe also some other libertarians. But um, I really wanted to use this uh, and and you know you could it, it it is shocking to see, and I think that's some of the point exactly of the Libertarian Party of New, New Hampshire doing this. They are trying to shock and trying to, like many on the right wing, on the fascist right wing, um, even though libertarians would claim that they're not fascists, um, uh, th th but that there is a a desire to shock and to overthrow what's considered have considered to be conventional morality of the last 60, 70 years, uh, or particularly 60 years of in the United States, where we are striving to be a multi-ethnic, multi-racial democracy. And so the Libertarian Party is trying to, to overthrow that by saying, by, by going at I know Nina Turner is black, I think. I, I don't think I mentioned that before. Anyway, N Nina Turner and and saying that you know she sh her picking cotton should be free or her uh, uh, crop you know and, and so this is obviously there's racist 
uh, and as she says, anti-black, specifically anti-black form of racism uh, directed at her by this party. And so and, and there is so there's a lot of it does, you don't need me to morally condemn this. Um, uh, it's obvious. It's in fact, that's that's that rail is there to or that that pathway is there for the left and for leftists to attack this. And it should be attacked from that standpoint. But there's also a more fundamental, in my opinion, or as fundamental, maybe not more fundamental, but uh, issue or or exposure of what I'm calling fantasy economics of the libertarians. It's not just morally repugnant what they're saying. They, in, sen in some sense, are are uh, are now uh, um, as the fascists, as neo fascists. They're essentially acting as neo fascists, even though they're calling themselves uh, uh, libertarians and by the way, in our current neo-fascist movement or the movement that exists in the United States and other countries, freedom, okay, so libertarian, free, liberty and freedom, so forth and so on, freedom is used as the the, motiv the highest motivation of these uh, fascists. They're freeing themselves of the morality, of the chains of morality and the chains of regulation of, of businesses or of of by government, but particularly also making an analog of the various efforts to create multi-ethnic, multi-racial uh, societies, mostly also in the United States, but also in other countries, and that that is a intolerable imposition on the individual's freedom to be racist and to be uh, and and to oppress or to exclude and oppress people who are unlike the more powerful group or more, you know, uh, uh, um, dominant or old, uh, uh, quote unquote, traditional group within that society and uh, or the, the more traditional high associated more closely in terms of their color, of their skin or maybe religion, maybe, um, uh, 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 you know, ethnicity, if not uh, actual, you know, this racist ideas about uh, uh, how people look uh, as being indication of their inherent v values, so forth and so on. But anyway, um, this uh, uh, effort or, or this idea that they represent freedom is very close. The libertarians are, even though they, some of them, they think of themselves as being anti-fascist or whatever, or not fascist, they are um, uh, creating or they're they're working on the same pathways and they're they're now de facto allies of the neo-fascists in the United States. But beyond that, so the political dimension, there's also a interesting um, uh, sort of intellectual um, fault that they uh, that they re exhibit or a, a you could call it emotional uh, psychological fault or whatever it is. But in, in any case, it's it's a fantasy economics that unfortunately our traditional academic economics has supported in its unrealistic models of how economies work and ahistorical models of how economies have worked and so and and how they've grown and how they've developed and so and that economics libertarianism and also you could say objectivism which is they claim not to be libertarians but they're very closely allied which is basically Ayn Rand um, uh, uh, influenced people and uh, uh, those um, uh, are neoliberals. So, so the old style neoliberal like, like Friedrich von Hayek, so forth and so on. Uh, and then th those, the newer versions of it, so forth and so on. But anyway, that's all based or all supported by the unrealistic models of the economy that uh, come from the academic economics that's dominant in most countries in the world uh, based on neoclassical economics with some various adders and subtractions now of course this economics is kind of fraying at the edges it's 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 still very much entrenched in e academia and it's very much in the memories of people who took economics classes in college throughout the world and in particularly the United States but also in other countries and um, that fantasy economics is on full display in this um, uh, Twitter exchange, and it undergirds and it supports racism. Okay, and it so so the racism is part of 
the intellectual, the supposedly pure intellectual model that has attracted so many people, including people who are black, people who are of various religions, so forth and so on. But the the sort of the um, intellectual uh, um, earworm, okay, which is uh, a German, I guess I'm translating a German word into English, but anyway, it's the kind of the the uh, the 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 groove, so to speak, the 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 attractive aspect of intellectually of the libertarian idea is it's a simple idea about capitalism and about the economics, and it also um, creates in the individuals who ascribe who aspire who who associate themselves with it a sense of personal superiority because they are they are so smart they know how things work and then also they are associating themselves with the successful in the economy with the rich in the economy with the pro the property owners in society and often there are are critiques of uh um uh, uh libertarianism that all say that it's essentially proprietarianism that it's really about uh the ownership of property is the uh, is the right that they're uh, protecting and and which includes which which might include and does in this case include the idea of or at least a, a distortion of property rights as they existed before the abolition of slavery in the United States and including the ownership of other people as chattel and uh, and so um, but anyway but that to leaving that particular aspect aside for the moment, um, the attacks on Nina Turner and her the ideas that are very standard progressive ideas throughout the world and are based on the idea of social democracy, which essentially has become the norm in uh, advanced industrialized countries and and also you know how rapidly uh, uh, industrializing or or, or sort of um, the the kind of not the core Western European countries but also countries like Singapore or um, uh, uh, other countries that are um, uh, you know not necessarily the richest countries in the world but many of them have decided to make uh, medical care. Um, a a free or almost free um, um, service that is funded partly or largely by the government and is uh, and where um, the notion of for instance medical bankruptcy is foreign uh, and is is unknown to for for people because they they are not um, uh, being put into the situation of having to pay out of pocket for many medical services, so or for almost all, or at least certainly basic medical services. They're 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 in various varying degrees. So it's not, um, and also it's under attack. This system of social democracy and social democratic guarantee of certain basic uh, uh, material rights um, uh, uh, to people. Uh, is is under attack within those societies. So it's not like all the societies or the leadership of those societies, the political leadership of those societies are firmly behind the idea of continuing to maintain or strengthen these guarantees of these rights, essentially, of, for instance, to health care. But anyway, uh, so this Libertarian Party of New Hampshire is tweeting as if uh, the exchange, the, in other words, that, that Nina Turner's proposal that a macro, it's not, a, it's a, the, the macroeconomic, in other words, the model of the society, including the government, the model of the economy, including the government, uh, should change to offer free medicine or free health care, which um, it's a, I'm assuming she's not just talking about medicine and uh, or, you know, in general, that's the demand of Medicare for all or some other. Um, uh, uh, even socialized healthcare, which is not Medicare for all, but anyway, uh, that they are they are using their framework of saying that all economic exchanges are exchanges between individuals. So, or even taxation is all about it's this model of everything is like a market, and so and everything every person is this this uh, and every entity is a 
profit ma or or uh, profit maximizing you could say or or um uh you could say also utility maximizing where utility is really a substitute for money uh entity and so every exchange is about a contract between two individuals and so if it's a free exchange in other words something is within this interaction is a free that someone is essentially enslaving the other person um to give them things for free so and this is a lunatic idea about how a socialized or a government-run medical system works it's a, it's a a um it's a it's a total distortion it has no it, it's like these are we're talking to 12th graders who became or not 12th graders 12 year olds who uh you know read the fountainhead or you know some other that in the case that's objectivist but anyway uh, libertarian style um book or murray rothbard and so forth and so on and they um uh, became you know ideologues of this and they they took that what i'm calling a fantasy economics about with using the myth of a free market the myth of of everything arising from these interactions between these profit maximizing individuals as being the only um form of exchange in a society so and so in any case they're saying well you know um uh it should be free you know i if if lena turner is demanding that uh this insulin should be free she's enslaving the insulin makers she's she's they're becoming her slaves and so and this is ridiculous so why is it ridiculous well in countries where insulin is free the government is paying the insulin makers for the insulin and they're making a profit from it a lower profit than they'd make in the United States. But why should the insulin makers make such a high profit, especially they have, they're they undertaking very little risk in if even if you have a capitalistic uh, framework for, um, uh, uh, you know, saying that reward should be given to people who take higher risks over and so on or greater reward should be given to people who take higher risks. They are taking almost no risk by producing insulin because there are di diabetic people in the society uh, that need insulin and you know maybe you know uh, in a better healthcare system they would be reducing the the incidence of diabetes so in some sense you know uh, uh, that's not a ga absolute guarantee that that they but it's a, it's certainly a low risk product to be making relative to something like a you know something a fat fa item of fashion that will go out of fashion very soon so um or a taste that involves personal taste of some kind or other where insulin is not a personal taste it, it's just a matter of survival for individuals who have diabetes so um this is uh this fantasy economics is what leads to them them to, so so they they are they imagine that the world is is operating that that they can assume that the readers of this tweet are operating with the same system and that they they at the same time try to humili humiliate uh, uh, Nina, you know, in in saying, well, she should just pick cotton for free, and making a reference back to slavery, and 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 uh, um, or at least saying, well, it's it's even though they will claim, well, they're not really saying that they're they're they are creating a racist uh, anti-black. Um, Die, discourse to sort of to to in a way it's a very defensive even though it's offensive it's very defensive in the in the realm of actual public policy because they have no solution to the problem of insulin and so forth and so on they they don't have any they're i mean we don't really have a free market in insulin it's a it's a ol oligopolistic you know managed market anyway of uh in healthcare it's not a you know there there's the insulin makers are not you know bidding for people's business with you know lower costs over and so on um uh in, in to the actual patients they may be bidding to to um uh a large uh, um you know managed care you know insurance uh or or hospital chains over and so on but they're uh it's nowhere near a free market and but still it's more like 
the ideas of the current system, the, the, the Libertarian Party is throwing up this fantasy version of economics to kind of defend our current system and or to actually defend our current system by trying to beat down the socialistic kind uh, or social democratic kind of relationship where you have a government that uh, manages some basic uh, needs, some sectors of the economy that are prone to predatory um, uh, pricing, predatory practices by um, uh, uh, you know companies, by by capitalistic uh, entities that are are going to prey on people's needs and especially are going to you know potentially impoverish people and use that as a threat to um, uh, to demand a higher profit margin on a product like insulin versus a state-run system where the state mediates this um, pricing aspect of of medicines and they they demand the lower price and they they fix the price at a certain level which the insulin makers are um, able to make a, a reasonable profit on their product but um, uh, not uh, the the windfall profits or relatively higher profits maybe of or not maybe actually in the United States relative to the same product being sold in you know Sweden or in um, uh, Italy or in France so um, anyway uh, or Canada so um, but using this fantasy economics by saying everything must be these this exchange between these individuals and that's really the natural state of an economy and so uh this idea that then you know it's exactly the same as they said i think it's the same feeling so to speak of the, the to demand uh the governments pay and regulate insulin makers is the same thing as to enslave another person and to um uh and not to pay them any money for their labor and to get their and and also there's another um meme that they created where they uh uh you know they are imagining that in this this would be the same thing as uh a plantation owner in the you know to saying or or to say that cotton should be free and uh and it's sort of and it's 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 so confused and a historical that you know the cotton makers the cotton uh not makers but the cotton the plantation owners who sold the cotton uh didn't pay the workers and the cotton wasn't free because they made money off it off the 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 the, the they made more money because they had uh argue i mean i don't know it just depends on uh I, I can't argue i you know there are ways in which slavery you know you had to feed the slaves so forth and so on so slavery has different economics than than wage labor um but anyway or various forms of tenant farming and 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 sharecropping and so forth and so on but um at least at that time it was a capitalistic enterprise and the libertarians cannot come to terms with the fact that it wasn't a free exchange between they these were unfree laborers and and they they wasn't they can't use their model their model is so deficient or and they, or they're so crazy in a way or so um ideological they're so such ideological fanatics that they can't understand that that there was a, a change there's a different um uh it was it can't be understood in terms of free the contracts being made between free and self self uh um you know funded essentially or uh, uh, p comfortable individuals who are comfortable enough to be able to, you know, select between like slaves didn't shop for mass masters. They they were the the possessions of masters, you know, and they couldn't just go off and the, the masters might sell sell them to another uh, uh, slave holder, and and that would be the change. But it doesn't come from the individual. It, they don't they didn't have agency, and this is something that. Uh, the libertarians are just, uh, you know, not able to um, uh, put into their model because their model is just so unrealistic. It's they don't understand 
real business, real capitalism. They think of themselves as understanding capitalism. And also, but their real, um, the reason for, let's say, aggressive forms of neoliberal ideological formations, including, I think, you know, libertarians are sort of an extreme form of neoliberalism or objectivists, so forth and so on, is that they um, uh, are really this, the, 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 an attempt to create this, this intellectual bauble for policymakers to some degree, for politicians, for idealistic young people, some of whom who have, you know, become uh, entranced by the libertarian idea because it's so simple and they think they, they sort of have, have, and it also it, it does conform to a, it's an anti conventional liberal morality, liberal in the, in the sort of American sense of liberal or social democratic, I would say morality that, you know, we are all human beings. We have a universal universalistic, um, uh, uh, striving. We strive for more equality. You know, equality is a, is a, is a very high value. And also, you know, freedom is also a high value, but equality and freedom are to not necessarily competing, but they're two very, very high values. And that, um, uh, but you, you can't, uh, um, uh, impose, you can't allow a, the, um, uh, the idea of freedom to enslave other people or to to diminish other people um, uh, and and to create a uh, a system where um, uh, one person's freedom is more valuable than another person's freedom. So that is both equality and freedom together. And so libertarians though are an, are a, an effort to create a value system that is about only about liberty, only about freedom, and not and and in a sense is a race it, it it imagines a race to sort of to become the most the richest and most powerful and to essentially allow your freedoms to to impose themselves on other people now of course this is libertarians always talk about the non-coercion uh idea that the people can't shouldn't be coerced over and so on but their the actual deployment of their ideas is about forms of economic coercion and the inequality and reinforcing and and exaggerating the current inequalities and to be deployed against progressive or socialistic or social democratic um, efforts to um, to create a society that is that is that is more uh, equal that is more caring that has more that is addressing the reality of the economy the reality of how the economy works, including um, uh, capitalist, uh, the function of functioning of capitalism. Now, um, so anyway, so I'm going to put links in the description box to this exchange, and I think you will find it illuminating if you're interested in these ideas, and and you'll see that you'll see how um, crazy the idea of even if you don't share you know, my leftist ideas and leftist um, approach or my particular approach to these issues or even some other leftist approach that you'll see how nutty and how out of touch these people are. And and they're such ideologues that they just, they, that they don't understand the reality of capitalism, which they claim to be the, the, the most fervent exponents of. So, but I do think, and this is something that I uh, sort of have hinted at in various videos and in my critique of Marx that I am working on or am at least verbalizing about in uh, Politics 2100. And I've, you know, I'm, I need to return to that draft that I've been working on. But anyway, um, there is, there are um, values of, about, you know, even though we need, much greater equality in America and many other societies. Uh, we are one of the more unequal societies. And uh, there is a differential um, contributions that people make to the economy. And they're also not just differential, not in terms of amount, but the creativity of the society comes from either collective 
processes where people are sharing ideas and that they're discussing them and so forth and so on. But then also individuals make individual contributions. They think about things differently and they express them and they or they invent things. They, they, they are inventors. So and this is an area where libertarians and objectivists and so forth and so on think that they're the the protectors of these aspects of our society and aspects of any society where you have individuals that are you know appreciated more they're they're for whatever characteristics they have or whatever products they make and and whatever even even their position in an organization that they seem to be a good manager of so forth and so on so these are um not things that the left has a good uh, way to discuss okay and and has let the right possess them and has let the right um uh, uh uh dominate even though in a way that's entirely unrealistic and is not about is doesn't explain the connectedness and the reciprocal reciprocality and the the role of government the role of political leadership in the creation of social wealth and social well-being the the right is totally out to lunch about that and and is not doesn't possess a good discourse about it but they the the left is leaving open this space i i think where individual um contribution and individual creativity and so forth and so on is not valued um well enough or is not not appreciated in a way that where one could can and including the value of entrepreneurship okay so i i am you know that that there are people who are entrepreneurs or become entrepreneurs not everybody but some people and they do things that are creative and so forth and so on and there should be some reward for that that is it's a form of work and it's a form of you know valuable work in a society so um how that looks and how how you can um uh create a society that is vastly more equal there's greater equality than our current u.s society um but also appreciates and fosters this ability of human beings to create and to to be individuals and so what's on to to be who they are or who they might be but also put them together or, or or have them be integrated together and be part of a society as a whole so it's it is no one size fits all um solution to this i don't think i mean i need maybe to think further maybe there's some you know wonderful abstraction that can come out of this thinking but um anyway but i think that there that opening has been allowed so so i'm even though i the first part of this video i'm talking about um how absurd this sort of religion of individual rights and individual freedom uh especially in economics especially but it's it, but it's rights that really revolve around property and around owning property and about using property um, but they've also kind of tried to associate themselves with human creativity and so forth and so on with or individual creativity and say that they are the guardians of that so forth and so on um i am coming on the other side i'm not saying they are they have outlandish ideas about it but there's been an opening created for them that has been constantly been run through by neoliberalism and also by um uh uh libertarians and so forth and so on so it's a it's a it's not something that we can you know um i think effectively and politically create essentially a a, a strong mixed economy a, a a left social democracy um uh that might be transformational into some other kind of society we can be working toward the circular economy that we need we have to have a circular economy there's no there's no choice about that in terms of um our survival as a species so so there's all these things but within that framework there is some movement and so forth and so on about how to do that and how to do that that 
where you know individuals are not stifled and where you can be both together with each other and connected with each other but at the same time also be ourselves and be individuals that are creating so um but the the libertarian discourse doesn't get us anywhere close to that and because it's just outlandishly foolish and stupid if you if i might say so and and it's 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 used as a pointed weapon against very commonsensical ideas as Nina Turner has expressed in her um, uh, recent tweets. So, and others do, not just Nina. So anyway, so I, I'm gonna leave this here and um, uh, please share your thoughts in the comments um, and also uh, let me know, you know, if, uh, you know, I, I've expressed both some pretty standard left criticisms of libertarianism as well as some some newer in the last part, some newer ideas about um, or maybe not so new, but in any case, somewhat more um, controversial ideas for a left from a left perspective about, you know, what where we need to be moving to, in a sense, become what I would call a hegemonic force in society where where we can create a more just uh, society and a more um, uh, ecologically stable society, um, uh, but also one that fosters individual uh, development, individual freedom, and 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 creativity. So anyway, so um, please like the video if you um, uh, found anything in it of interest. Please uh, um, subscribe to Politics Twenty One Hundred. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.